Hello, Gunner James 105. This uh, I'll start with is something that I had gotten, uh, oh, maybe three weeks ago now. And it was through a, a friend of mine. He had found this uh, in a, a town well, a couple hundred miles from where I live. And he had taken some uh, photographs. It was some kind of a salvage uh, center that come across this. And so through the pictures and wheeling and dealing and as far as price and all that, I, I think I come out pretty good on this. Um, it's got a very interesting uh, history in that it's Canadian and this is a Canadian paratrooper helmet. Now what was happening after the uh, or towards the end of the Second World War and, and, and post-war was that there weren't enough of these helmets for the paratroopers because they, they uh, decided with the uh, Cold War uh, that they might need to not maybe cease uh, uh, and, and limit a lot of this stuff, they, they thought they had to expand it. So they needed more uh, helmets, airborne helmets. And the British, well, they had quit making their uh, pattern, and uh, they, it was uh, very famous that they had, uh, they quit making it. I think we did talk them into uh, ramping up again and, and producing a few uh, hundred of them, I, I'm not sure, but what happened was, uh, and this is, uh, this is not tied down at the moment because I needed to take it off so I can show you the markings, etc., uh, underneath on the liner and on the helmet. But this uh, is a, a genuine um, helmet net. The scrim is something that I, that's an invention of mine, I guess. I, I wanted to uh, do it up to, for the look or for the effect. So this is not the original scrim to this helmet. And uh, it's just basically uh, uh, an old green shirt with some... Uh, gunny sack material, some of it blank coat green, and so it, it looks all right, I think. Gives the effect. So I'll take that off and just set that aside. This helmet is um, shaped like so, and is actually, minus these brass, whoops, brass screws, this is a dispatch rider's helmet. And this helmet, when it came to me, had this chalky black, I mean, if you touched it at all, you get this black crap everywhere. You couldn't set it anywhere. And then there was a gold band around it. So I don't know who did what at what point to uh, paint that on there, but it, it, was, it was pretty bad. And a shiny gold, like I say, band. And so I went to remove that paint and come across this um, light green paint. And then I come across a very bright blue and... Uh, but it was all patchy and there was some yellow and, and white and and so I don't know how many coats of paint or what this thing had gone through but its original color would have been a uh, kind of a brownish green so at the moment this is what I've got just what I'm going to do any further than this I don't know but uh, the other stuff as far as I can tell had to go because it was it was very uh, uh, patchy and ugly with like I said red green uh, yeah there's red green yellow white blue so We've got that to this point here, and uh, so what? what is unique about this is, this has still got the uh, original style from the British paratrooper helmet as far as the uh, neck brace and chin strap, and so that would definitely work the same way. You know, go up through here, and then you're going to come through, and then uh, any excess that's on there, that's going to tuck into that piece there. Like so. And so this is all in pretty good condition. There are some cracks or whatever down on the bottom there, but it, it's it's not anything that's going to come apart. And it's still got the, the chamois chin strap. And so the next thing I need to show you or tell you about what makes this thing quite different and the fact that this was a dispatch rider's helmet and that the back of the helmet, as you can see right now, this would be the back of the helmet. But prior to that, this was the back of the helmet when it was the dispatch riders. And you can see here, there's leather that goes all the way around. And that leather was, and if I can, uh, this is a great book. I love this book. It's uh, got a ton of information. And thanks to this fella here, uh, I can show you the, uh, the look of that, get out of that glare. But that's what used to be on the side of this helmet. So we have that, and then 
So then what they decided to do was that the big heavy padded for your forehead, this is this has actually got um, a big piece of uh, leather covered foam there. And that was to protect the, the uh, forward, forehead of the uh, dispatch rider. And this was the back. Well, now what they did was this is the for the uh, airborne uh, soldier. That goes on the back of the head. And there's your forehead there. And then they added this pad, just like the British ones. So they've got that pad down on the bottom. So that was added. Uh, this remains the same. And so now we've got an airborne helmet that was made... Uh, yeah, for, for the purpose of, uh, or for dispatch riders made the purpose of airborne. Now, this is all foam, black foam rubber. And this appears to be the same thing, but covered in leather again across the back. So that's, that's all padded there. And so I'll show you, um, and hopefully it shows up there. But what I've got... There it is. It's tough to do. <clears throat> Should add my flashlight, but I've got what I've got in here is a broad arrow in dark ink, and then I've got CLC, and then I've got a big L, 1944. So that was uh, the uh, Can a Canadian lamp company. The L stands for large, so a large shell, and then the year 1944. So that's marked there. And then on the uh, on the liner itself, someone has written in possibly their last name, nickname, not sure, in pen. And then we've got this on here now. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a 44. Sorry, 45, and then this BS in a circle, and then the size 7.5. And, and so the uh, BS then is for Backstay Standard Company of uh, Ontario, and that's who made this liner. And then I believe on the inside, it's also got another mark. So this is the only other markings I can find on it. There's a C broad arrow with the 212. So quite a a neat find for probably half price or less than what they would, uh, well, I'm going to say less than half for sure, than they'd, they'd normally go for. So they did do, uh, you had your, your normal dispatch rider helmet had these four rivets holding that on. So then they had to add these brass screws and nuts for the, the back strap. And then the same here. And you can actually adjust, you know, you can, there's uh I think it goes all the way down to about here. Yeah, there's the bottom of the that strap. So you can adjust this up or down uh, to fit. So this here perhaps uh, could be a video in itself. Uh, I was going to include it as far as the uh, uh, my military finds video, but I think I'm going to call this video done. And uh, then we will... Uh, Next up will be the the uh, military collectibles. So, thanks for watching.